Hi guys, welcome to MDR Pro tutorial. In today's tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how I made this beautiful bustier with a deep illusion you're using the easiest method. It is so simple, detailed and beginner friendly. I'll also be showing you how to achieve a very neat finishing when making a bustier with a yoke like this. So if you love what you see and you want to know how it was achieved, please watch till the end. And if today is your first time on this channel, please click on the subscribe button and also on the notification bell so you get notified whenever we post a new video. And also don't forget to drop a like and a comment. So the first thing I'm going to go ahead to do is to draft on my pattern paper. After doing that, I'll transfer it to the main fabric. So I'll be drafting first. So first, I'll go ahead to draw a straight horizontal line at the top of my paper, which is going to serve as the shoulder line. Next, I will insert my shoulder measurement on that line. So I'm going to be marking my shoulder divided by 2. The shoulder divided by 2 is 7 inch. I'll go ahead to mark it. Next, I'll be coming down by 1 inch for the shoulder slope at this point. After which, I'll come down and insert my armhole depth which is 7.5 inch next thing i'm going to go ahead to do is to connect with my ruler like this so this part here is going to serve as the chest line after doing this next thing i'm going to go ahead to do is to insert my vertical measurement which is the shoulder to the bust point shoulder to the waist and shoulder to the half length so my shoulder to bust point is 10.5 shoulder to under bust is 13.5 and shoulder to the waist is 16 inch after marking this point i'll go ahead to draw a straight horizontal line with my ruler like this So this part is going to serve as the bust point, here is the under bust and here is the waist or half length. The next thing I'm going to go ahead to do is to insert the dart and in doing that I'm going to go ahead to mark half of my nipple to nipple measurement on the waistline and also on the bust point line. So my nipple to nipple is 7 divided by 2 is 3.5. I'll mark it on the waist and also on the bust point line. After marking, I'll connect with my ruler like this. Next, I'm going to go ahead to take out the waist dart. And for the waist dart, I'm going to be using 2 inch for the waist dart and I'll be marking 0.5 inch on the center panel this way. Then on the side, I'll go ahead to mark 1.5 inch. After marking, I'll connect with my ruler like this. Next, I'm going to be coming down by 1 inch from the bust point area. After coming down, I'm going to connect to the under bust using the curve part of my ruler like this. So next I'm going to go ahead to do is to extend my nipple to nipple line this way. But before then I'm going to go ahead to measure the nipple to nipple line on my chest line this way. Then I'll connect it with my ruler. So this is what we are going to be having. The next I'm going to go ahead to do is to determine the placement of the yoke. And in doing that, I'm going to go ahead to mark 0.5 inch on the waistline this way. So if you want it to be smaller, you can mark 0.25 inch. Then on the chest line, I'm going to go ahead to mark 1.5 inch. If you want it to be wider, you can mark 2 inch or 2.5 inch. Or you can even go down to 1 inch, depending on how wide you want the lace there to be. Then on the armhole line, I'm going to be coming down by 4 inch like this. After marking the point, I'm going to go ahead to connect the three points together with my ruler this way. So this is going to serve as the yoke. So you can decide to use a net, a two net or a lace for this part of the dress. The next I'm going to go ahead to do is to tighten the overbust and in doing that I'll first extend the nipple to nipple line then I'll go ahead to tighten the overbust by marking one inch at this point this way after marking it I'll connect to my bust point line using my ruler like this After tightening the overbust, the next I'm going to go ahead to do is to insert my bust and waist circumference measurement. So I'm going to go ahead to insert my bust divided by 4 on the chest line this way. I'm going to go ahead to mark it. After marking it, I'll measure what I have on this dart area and I'll replace it on the side this way. Next, I'll move over to the waist area and I'll do the same thing. My waist divided by 4, I'm going to go ahead to mark it. Then I measure what I have on this dart area and replace it on the side. After which, I'm going to go ahead to connect the side with my ruler like this. 
Next, I'm going to go ahead to do is to replace this one inch on the side this way. I'm doing this to avoid shortage when joining the yoke to the lower body. So to avoid shortage, it's best to replace this one inch so that when joining is going to fit in properly. Next, I'm going to go ahead to extend this line to the one inch point after which I'll draw the armhole like this. So this is what we are going to be having. The next thing I'm going to go ahead to do is to insert my string allowance of 1.5 inch on the boss point area and also on the waist area after which I'll connect with my ruler like this. So next I'm going to go ahead to draw the neck width and the neck depth. I'm going to be using a neck width of 3.5 and a neck depth of 3.5 also. After which I'll go ahead to draw a simple round neck with my ruler like you see me doing in the video. Then I'll go ahead to draw the shoulder slope for the blouse I'm making. So basically this is what it is going to look like. The next I'm going to go ahead to do is to cut it out and I'm going to be cutting off this that area you see me marking at this point. So, and also, I'll I'm going to be redrawing my armhole after I join the center to the side and also the yoke. That is when I'm going to go ahead to draw the armhole because of this that intake I took here. If you notice, I didn't redraw the armhole for the front. I'm going to be doing that after joining the yoke to the main bodies. Next, I'm going to go ahead to cut out my pattern. So just watch what I'm doing and follow the same process. So after cutting this is what you are going to be having so i'm going to go ahead to fix it for you to see what it looks like so when it's fixed this is what you should have and when you close up this part this is what you should have as you can see this part is aligning so it is important to replace whatever that you take on the armhole area to avoid shortage next i'm going to go ahead to cut my fabric so I went ahead to cut out my fabric and this is what I have. I added swing allowance on this area as you see here and also on the yoke I added my swing allowance around this part. Next I'm going to go ahead to pad the bustier using my wording. So I went ahead to pad it. This is what I have. I only padded this part of the fabric. I did not pad the yoke area because it is not necessary and also my wording is 0.5 inch away from the neckline and this is what you are going to be having when it is being torn to the good face. The next I'm going to go ahead to do now is to sew and first I'm going to go ahead to join these two parts together this way. So I'm going to be placing it to good face facing good face after which I'll go over my sewing machine to close it up. I'll be doing the same thing for the other side and also for my lining. So I'm going to be showing you how to sew it together. So this is what you should have when you arrange it. So the first thing I'm going to go ahead to do is to sew these two parts together. After which I will sew the other one and I'll also go ahead to do the same for my lining also. So just watch what I'm doing and follow the same process. So after sewing, this is what we are going to be having. Next, I'm going to go ahead to do is to trim up this part so that it will align when fixing the yoke. And in doing that, I'm going to be placing the two of them together this way, making sure that the good face is facing each other. After which, I'll go ahead to arranging it together like this. Then I'm going to go ahead to trim up this part. So just watch what I'm doing and follow the same process. And I'll also be doing the same thing for the lining also. 
so after trimming it this is what it is going to look like the next thing i'm going to go ahead to do is to give it a good press so i'm going to go ahead to notch this area then i'll open up the seam and give it a good press after which i'll come back to show you what to do next So I've gone ahead to give it a good press and this is what I have. So the next thing I'm going to go ahead to do is to attach the yoke to this part. And I'm going to be fixing it in the center this way. So make sure you finish up your yoke, the neckline of the yoke with a bias or you use the same fabric to finish up the neckline. So I'm going to go ahead to join the yoke to the side this way. So I'm going to be placing it like this, making sure that the good face of my fabric is facing the good face of the yoke. After which I'll go ahead to place my lining on it this way. So the yoke is going to be in between the lining and the main fabric. Next, I'm going to go out over my sewing machine to sew it like this. So after sewing, I'm going to go ahead to notch this curved area. So I'm going ahead to notch it. I'm going to be opening it up for you to see what it's going to look like. So when you open it up, this is what you should have. As you can see, it's looking neat and looking beautiful already. And this is what the inner part of the blouse is going to look like. Next, I'm going to go ahead to do is to close up the side. And in doing that, I'll be placing the yoke inside this way. Then I'll go over my sewing machine to close up the side. So after sewing, I'm going to be turning it over to the good face for you to see what it looks like. So after it is being turned over to the good face, this is what you should have. As you can see, it's looking very beautiful and it is looking neat also. So when you turn it over to the bad face, this is what you should have. The next thing I'm going to go ahead to do is to join the other side to the yoke this way. So I'm going to be placing it this way, making sure that the good face of the fabric is facing the good face of the yoke. And I'll place my lining underneath it. So make sure that the yoke is in between the lining and the main fabric after which i'll go over my sewing machine to sew it after sewing i'll also go ahead to notch it After sewing and notching, I'm going to go ahead to close up the side also like I did for the first part. So I'll push it inside this way. Then I'll go by my sewing machine to close up the sides. After closing up the side, I'm going to turn it over to the good face for you to see what it looks like. And this is what we have. As you can see, it's looking beautiful already and also looking very neat. And this is what the inner part of the bustier is going to look like. So next thing you're going to go ahead to do is to attach it to your peplum if you're making a blouse or to the skirt part of your gown if you're making a gown. So I'm going to be stopping this video at this point. So if this tutorial was helpful to you, please don't forget to drop a like and a comment. And also, if you are new to this channel and you're yet to subscribe to this channel, please click on the subscribe button and also turn on the notification bell so you get notified whenever I post a new video. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in my next tutorial.